What's up everybody and welcome to a new video and today we're going to talk about uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. It's a new Resident Evil movie which is coming uh, near the end of the year and we've today learned a lot of new details about this uh, movie from IGN. IGN had an exclusive interview with the director of the movie uh, jo Johannes Roberts and in that interview we can learn a lot about what this movie is going to be and therefore today i'm going to discuss this uh, together with david and uh, we're going through all these new details that we've learned from this article that was published on ign today so first of all we've got uh, a new look at some of the characters in the movie so we have here an image of uh, leon kennedy and claire redfield so first of all this is actually going to be an adaption of both Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. So it's going to basically incorporate both stories from both games. So I'm not really sure how they're going to do that. I mean, canonically Resident Evil 2 takes place two months after the events of Resident Evil 1. So I'm wondering how they will time skip that or will they just merge both storylines into one? Not really sure how they will do that. So the movie is being produced by the production studio Screen Gems and Screen Gems actually uh, has already produced all the other Resident Evil movies as well and a plethora of uh, well B-horror movies. So they're not really unknown to Resident Evil and they're also not really unknown to, uh, to horror movies in general, then the movie itself is, like I said before, being directed by Johannes Roberts. And Johannes Roberts, he, he made a couple of other horror movies as well, among which 47 Meters Down and The Strangers Pray at Night. And, and David, you are the master of cheap horror movies. Can, can you tell me what is your opinion that he is directing this movie? I'm actually excited that he's uh, rebooting the, the series as a, as a whole and, and not just taking the same uh, route that the previous uh, Resident Evil movies have taken. Right, indeed. And I agree with that. And I think also having somebody helming this movie that isn't making big budget Hollywood movies all the time is probably a good thing because the original trilogy of Resident Evil games, so Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 and even Resident Evil 4, they they have some of they have a little bit of a campy vibe. I don't think they're really uh, I mean the writing is not really high quality all the time. So I think it's it would be perfectly fine for me if this movie all also has some of this campiness as well. But they don't really talk about that uh, that much in this article. Instead, they do talk about the differences between this Resident Evil movies and the previous Resident Evil movies and how this filmmaking approach differs from these previous movies. So in the article they say, and I quote, this was all about returning to the games and creating a movie that was much more a horror movie than the sort of sci-fi action of the previous film. So it really looks like they're going back to the roots of Resident Evil itself. They also say that the movie is basically entirely shot at night and uh, well that's basically when Resident Evil 1 and 2 take place so they take place during the night so I really like that. I think it could be a very good choice uh, for me uh, uh, playing Resident Evil 1 uh, and, and 2 also a little bit really capture that feel that, that you're being alone in this weird town and this weird city so I think it's a good direction to go that way. And then in the article they talk a little bit further about the casting of the of these of this movie and what they are particularly uh, talking about what what the director Johannes Roberts is talking about is how he used these characters in his movie and how he casted these characters the actors for these roles and I quote he says I think often in game adaptations one of the big flaws can be just casting someone to look visually like the characters. Giving them the identical haircut and clothes but not really trying to give the audience the thing that a movie does better than a game." End quote. Yes, yeah, so this is interesting that he's talking about this part with, because everybody on social media and internet is already lashing out at the character pictures that are released that they're looking more like cosplay characters than actual movie characters um, but yeah if he's really going for this 
ensemble cast of characters that don't really have to look identical to the, to the game characters. It's a good thing, I think, that he's going for more personality and a more in-depth view of the characters. Yes, indeed. When I'm looking at the pictures, he's, he's correct. I mean, I don't really see exactly Leon Kennedy and I don't exactly see Claire Redfield. But I mean, what, what does it matter, right? Uh, in the end, it's a movie. It's not the game. If they... Uh, copy the game one-on-one -on -one, well why shouldn't i just play the game right it should also be its own thing well apart from that we also get another uh, image inside the spencer mansion itself and uh, we can something very interesting we can see here because actually the mansion actually quite just from looking at this shot it quite looks like really the mansion from the first game and uh, that's also something that Johannes Roberts says in the interview. He says, and I quote, We worked hand in hand with Capcom on this movie to the point that we actually got blueprints from them on the designs of the Spencer Mansion and Raccoon Police Station in order to recreate them as perfectly as we could. We even have the exact artwork up on the mansion walls, end quote. So I really like that they have access to all these assets that Capcom have created for the Resident Evil franchise. And I'm already looking forward to make some real comparisons between the movie mansion and the game mansion. Really looks like they're, go they're going to follow that design of that environment very closely. And then uh, some image that I really thought was looking quite creepy. And that is this image of Marina Mazeppa as Lisa Trevor. What do you think of this uh, character portrayal, the way we see her here in this image, uh, David? Uh, yes, to me, Lisa looks really frightening here already. And I love that uh, she has some hair coming out of her eyeball, or at least where I used to be. Um, and she just might be the perfect candidate to play this role. So before this video, we had a quick look at a demo reel of Marina Mazepa on her IMDb page. And there we can see that she is a very agile lady. The way that she can kind of bend herself into different poses might make her actually the ideal candidate to portray such a character in a horror movie. Just imagine that she is like crawling like this in the movie towards Chris and Jill and freaking out the characters. I don't remember uh, Lisa Trevor being that agile, but then again, this movie is going to be its own thing. So let's see what she makes of it. Another interesting thing about the character of Lisa Trevor in this movie is that they're actually going to connect her to Claire Redfield. Because as you remember from the games, Claire Redfield grew up in an orphanage. And in this movie, they are somehow going to connect her growing up in the orphanage with also with Lisa Trevor and I'm not really sure how they're going to do that that remains a little bit vague from what we can read in the article but they already are saying that they will have some kind of connection through this orphanage so this movie it will uh, release November 24th 2021 in the US November 25th in Australia and then followed by the UK on December 3rd. So we can all look forward to that. And with that said, I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. We really enjoyed making more Resident Evil content and we'll see you next time.